other differences you can spot are their uses. So this one here is a shampoo, that one says body wash, and that one's a washing up liquid. If you're thinking about other differences, well, if you take a smell, you press that one, I can definitely smell the tea tree in that one. If I take this one, the washing up liquid, here, quite a strong smell in that one. So there's a number of differences between these products. There are some similarities however, and that's what we're dealing with today because essentially these three products, although they're very different, they have different uh, prices, they've got different customers in mind, their ingredients are very similar. And if sometimes you look at the back of a bottle, you might not be able to spot it on here, but if you look closely, uh, I can see it. But one of the ingredients is there is called sodium lauryth sulfate, and that's actually one of the main ingredients of the shampoo that we're making today. This shows all you'll need to make a shampoo. Uh, on the far left you've got a pen and some labels, you've got some sample bottles and you've got the raw ingredients. So we'll go through each first and you've got a sheet of paper telling you the instructions. So if you look at those instructions the first thing it says is you need some water. So there's the water pointing there. You need some what's called sodium LS. So that's um, this bottle here, sodium LS. Then says you'll need ammonium LS, which is next to it. And you'll need some empogen, which is here. The other ingredient you'll need is sodium chloride, which is a solution of sodium chloride, which is in this bottle here. And it says, first of all, it says, uh, use the ingredients, it's got nine centimeters cubed of water, four centimeters cubed of, of, of sodium LS, two and a half of ammonium LS, and seven drops of empogen. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to use my sample tubes here, and I'm going to put my nine centimeters cubed of water, I'm going to squirt it into this measuring cylinder here, like so, on the top, and I'm going to squirt that in until I get to nine. Okay, I've got nine in there. I'm going to pour that into my sample vial here, like so. And what you can do to begin with, I didn't do it just then, but what you can do is you need to add a marble, so I'm going to add my marble. Could have done that at the beginning. So there's my marble inside, and the marble and the water. And the marble's used uh, so that I can mix the product. So I've added nine centimeters cubed of water, and now I need four centimeters cubed of sodium LS. And for this, we don't use a measuring cylinder, we use a disposable pipette instead. So I'm going to take the top off, and on the disposable pipette, it actually goes up to three centimeters cubed on the mark. So I'm going to use two, two lots of two centimeters cubed. Sodium LS is quite thick, so you have to wait a little bit. There's two centimeters cubed there. I'm going to pop two in, and I'm going to do a second one so that I get to four, there we are, two centimeters cubed there. I get to four centimeters cubed. Okay, that's that one. I am going to use a different pipette for the next one. So the next one it says is it's got down on the sheet two and a half mils of ammonium lauryl sulfate. So I can do this all in my pipette. So I'm taking two and a half in that. There we go. Two and a half into that. I'll leave that in actually. Put those in. That and the other one it says seven drops of empogen. The empogen I don't need a pipette for because it's got a special a dropper on the top. So I'm going to add seven drops one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like so. So I've added almost all the ingredients and then it says you need a thickener because if I put the top on now and I'll screw tight the lid. So put the lid on. Right, so you've now got your basic shampoo. Mix it a little bit with a shampoo with a marble. 
But the problem is that it's still very thick, so it's not looking like shampoo. So the thickener that many shampoos use is sodium chloride, the stuff you find in seawater that's all common salt. And we're going to add some. Now on the instructions it says you can use anywhere between 0 and 4 centimetres cubed. And the reason for the range is that it's really up to you how thick you want the shampoo. So if you don't want it very thick, if you want a floor cleaner, then you add very little sodium chloride. But if you want a shampoo or you want a body wash, then you might want to get close to 4. I'm going to measure out the sodium chloride and I'm going to do that using the uh, measuring cylinder. Don't use the pipettes for these. The one to do is the measuring cylinder. I'm going to put four into there. So there's four in there, four centimetres cubed. But I will add a little bit at a time. So I'm going to add the first little bit, like that. It can go a bit wider at the bottom, and that's perfectly normal. And when I mix it, it will, the white colour will disperse. It's hard to do this one hand. Also, when you're making commercial products, when you're making commercial products, what you do is you put them in the uh, warm them up to about 40 degrees, and they will go clear. So you can see now it's got a little bit thicker. Notice I'm not shaking the tube because if you shake the tube, it will go frothy. But I'm just doing it gently. It also means if I really shake it hard, then I'm going to smash the glass. At the moment, these glass sample tubes. Look, that's really nice thickness. Now, I didn't add all of the four centimeters cubed that I put in the measuring cylinder, and, um, and I think I can add a bit more. So I can. I believe this is going to go into a shampoo bottle, and I don't want it all to spill out everywhere. Then I might want it a bit thicker. So I'm going to take the lock lid off. And I'm going to put a bit more in. So, I've, so far, I've added about two centimeters cubed. I'm going to add another little bit more. If I add too much sodium chloride, then what you tend to find is that it goes thinner again. So although the sodium chloride, you need it to be thick, a bit too much and it will go thin. So I'm going to that's added just about, just over three. Alright, keep stirring that a little bit. Like I said, when, if this is warmed, I know we haven't got time in the 40 minutes, but if it's warmed, then it will go clear. And it will stay clear as well. Okay, that's my basic shampoo mixture done. You can see the marble dropping very slowly now, so that's nice, that's nice and thick. All right. That's step one, is making your basic ingredients of shampoo. The next thing is, no one's going to buy that as it is, because you need to customise it. So to customise it, I've got a range of uh, accessories. The first one is I've got scents and oils. Next one I've got glitter. And the next one I've got colourings. If I go through them all, the colourings at the moment are food colours. Now, lots of people will add lots of colouring to their shampoos. Uh, the only problem is that food colourings tend to stay. And actually, in the shampoo, the colourings, which are a little bit different, but they will stay, are used in much lower concentrations. So um, be careful with the colourings because they will stain your fingers. The glitter is good to have in shampoos or body washes, and I have it there because it's fun, but it's also an exfoliant. So anything gritty you put in your shampoo uh, could be used as an exfoliant. And obviously, you want uh, nice smells in there. Uh, ones which are water based, like this is almond extract. That won't affect your product too much, but these ones you want to just restrict it to just a couple of drops or one drop uh, because they will, um, they can affect your shampoo and make them all thin again. So I'm going to decide, I'm going to take these now and I'm going to add, I think I'll add a little bit of the green, well actually I'll do a red one, a bit of glitter, pink glitter maybe, and I'm going to use some lavender. Alright, so that's what I'm going to do. I've made my product now, I've mixed all the ingredients up and what I've got is a sample there. I'm going to call this one a taste of passion. It's a nice red shampoo with glitter inside it and it's got a really nice smell to it from one of the oils. So I'm going to call it taste of passion. So I'm going to label it 